Hi, Art Noble here again, author of The Sacred Female and your resident expert in sexual biology. And today we're going to discuss uh, another emission from women, but this time possibly from the uterus. Now I said uh, in my original video here on this that there were three sources and I misspoke. There are possibly four. Now, of course, there is no science on this, and the only evidence we have is anecdotal. But, man, from what I've learned, I'm not going to put anything past women. So now, here we go. In the last video, we spoke about uh, emissions from ducks inside the vagina. Uh, from what source, we don't know, either additional glands or perhaps the prostate or even the urethra. But there we're talking maybe an ounce of fluid tops. But the uterus, in, we know that the uterus can hold 800 cc's of amniotic fluid along with a nine pound kid. So, I mean, we're talking about the potential for huge quantities of female orgasmic emission here. Now, does it always happen like that? Absolutely not. For heaven's sakes, I mean, I have no idea how much fluid is going to build up in a woman's uterus while she's having sex, and it's going to vary from time to time, from woman to woman. So, it's immaterial. But the most important thing here that we ought to consider is that we humans are lousy judges of fluid discharge, flow, or even spills. I mean, we spill a cup of milk on the floor and it looks like we got to clean up a quart. But we spill a cup of mashed potatoes on the floor and it looks like a cup of mashed potatoes. It hasn't spread out the way fluids do. So we're lousy judges of, of fluid quantities and volumes. And let's keep that in mind as we take a look at the biology and the anatomy of what can be going on in a woman's body. Okay, now let's take a look here at the internal female genitalia, the anatomy, and notice that over the urinary bladder I've put a red line to represent the uh, detrusor muscle. Now, when a woman quote, squirts, um, this is representative of a contraction of the detrusor muscle squeezing down on the urinary bladder just like you'd be stepping on a full wine skin, okay, and it squirts out. Now, does it always happen this way? No. The contractions of the detrusor muscle may be pulsating. Therefore, the fluid coming out would be pulsating. And the, the detrusor muscle may not contract at all, which means that the fluid, the uh, urinary bladder discharge, would just flow out. Okay, now we've got that one down as a comparison. Now let's go up, move up, and take a look at the uterus. Now the red lines that I've put there are representative of bands of muscle that go around the uterus. Now of course as it, as it fills up with fluid, those bands will expand uh, just like they do when the woman's pregnant and allowing for the uh, for room for the baby to exist in there. Now when she has an orgasm, these muscle bands will contract and force the fluid out. Maybe. Is it possible that the muscle contractions of the urinary bladder could be confused with the contractions of the muscle bands around the uterus? Uh, they're in pretty pl close contact, so we could be dealing with uh, uh, urinary uh, bladder flow rather than uterine flow. I don't know. Some women, you have to understand that uh, from my standpoint, w women are far better in tune with their own bodies than men are. 
and they know this stuff. Some women, not all, but some women are far more in tune with their bodies than men are. Now, the next thing is, well, if it's filling up with uh, fluid there, uh, how come it's just not leaking out? Well, that's because of the cervix. Now, let's take a look at the cervix. I mean, I'm a guy. I thought the cervix, eh, like it's shown here, was just a hole in the bottom of the uterus, right? <laughs> Wrong. This, the cervix, like any other structure on a woman, is very complex. And it is normally closed. Now, here in this drawing, I've used the one that had the Polish labels on it for the simple reason that <laughs> we're not going to be taking a test on this to know which ones they are. But in the middle there, uh, the cysts or whatever it is, uh, the uh, that's the cervical canal, okay? And that's usually closed and it only opens three times and those three times are on childbirth on menstruation to allow the menses to escape and on orgasm now at one time there was something called the upsuck theory that said that the you, the cervix opened so that it could suck up sperm into the uterus and therefore form the baby. And I'm looking at it the other way around. Maybe the cervix opens on orgasm so that it can discharge its fluid. And of course, when it does that, man, is that some kind of birth control or what? You're washing out every little bit of sperm that might be in there. So there's another advantage of that. Now, back to the uh, to the drawing of the genitalia here. We've seen that the um, flow from the uterus could be confused with flow from the urinary bladder. We don't know. As I said, the only evidence we have on this is from anecdotal evidence from women. Except for one thing, I was told by a guy that when his wife had an orgasm, it felt like she was the fluid was pushing him out. Well, this is obviously not urinary discharge, urinary bladder discharge. It's obviously fluid from the vagina, copious amounts of fluid. How much? We don't know. But the guy felt like he was being pushed out, so something's going on there. We have seen in the past four videos four different sources of fluid emissions from a woman on an orgasm. Now, in Sanskrit, these are called amrita, or sacred waters, either collectively or individually. Could be referring to one or all of them, who knows? Because they didn't break it down this way. But anyway, uh, they're called sacred waters. Now, I find it really funny uh, that anthropologists for the past 200 years who have no knowledge of this phenomenon uh, may have grossly misinterpreted a number of the signs on female figurines and other uh, drawings throughout uh, the ancient world. And their misinterpretation may have been just as great a misinterpretation as the ancients who believed that uh, this fluid, these emissions, were necessary for conception. I mean, we all make these mistakes, no big deal. So there you have it, the four different emissions from a woman. And I view these, these sacred waters, as a gift a sacred gift from the woman, and I am delighted by it. On top of which, her pleasure in giving this gift is increased by an order of magnitude. So, whichever way you want to go, either in giving her more pleasure or a 
faith and not giving her, allowing her to have more pleasure, or receiving this gift. Either way, it's going to work. And I want to thank you for watching. And our next video is going to be on orgasms, a different view. Thanks again.